Hello and welcome back. Today I have a new portable radio. It is from uh, Red Tevis. I had a few Red Tevis radios before, but this is a completely new one. It is an alliance with uh, a launch, I think. Not sure how to pronounce it, but it is the HD2 and it is a full digital and also analog radio. And the HD2 is of course a follow-up of the HD1. They added Bluetooth 5. Uh, it has a 3200 milliamps battery. It can have 500,000 uh, addresses and they added also uh, 265 to the encryptions. The radio is quite big compared to the model before. This is not the HD1, uh, but it is an other DMR uh, radio. This is the RT52. And if you find the standard model, then it is even smaller, so it goes up. But they have the same type of uh, look, and it just looks clean and strong. It uh, comes with the charger. You just uh, click it in. It uh, works with the uh, with the USB C, very compact. But what is also great, you can also directly put it in the back. It comes with a clip that you can put on the battery and because it has Bluetooth, they even provide a Bluetooth headset. My version has GPS and it came with a programming cable. So we're going to play with this. The radio looks very nice, feels strong. Uh, it's an IP67, I think. It has a color display. Channel mode six. It, it talks a little bit. If you transmit, even the display gets red and of course the light on top. But if you receive, the display turns uh, green. You can see the menu just works very easy. You can just scroll through it and then you do OK or, or back. So now we are in FM mode. I will be connecting the radio to the Marconi to check all the power levels. I will also do on the spectrum analyzer because I've read in some forums that people were a little bit concerned about the harmonics. So let, uh, let us check that. Also, I want to do a firmware update. This one came with version one just out of the factory. It's all also from February, but uh, I think from uh, April there is a 207. I also want to try to download that uh, into the radio and then we can do again the power levels and the uh, harmonics to see if it improved or got worse or maybe stayed the same. In there. And then I will go through the power levels. Of course, I'm not going to connect the radio directly to my spectrum analyzer. I made this little box. It's RF top. It has a minus 40 dB exit internal uh, dummy load or just as a tap. And I have a video about it. I think I found the original design on the computer's uh, channel. I forgot his name, but I will link it down below. Okay, let's do the firmware update. Well, the software you can just download from the Aloons uh, website. 
and uh, you can have there the programming software just to program the channels and you can do there the firmware update the software we can download in uh, a launch or how we pronounce it not at Retevis. and here we have the programming software the USB driver Whoop, there it goes and we have here the firmware for the no GPS and with the GPS there we have it and we oh and it found something yes i have a workaround for this issue i come back to this later that's only the firmware so in the download folder the firmware i will just do later on my laptop and let's see if we install the driver then we can install the software So we plug in the cable. Usually I open my device manager, but with the port notifier, it immediately tells me, oh, it's port 13, 13. So we start the application. Then we say device, the port, we select the COM port, and then we do a read from a radio. And this will take a while. It says OK in the screen and then the radio just uh, reboots after. Here we can do a few settings. The frequency set here, you can set your standards if you are in the Europe or in the US. Here in Europe we use this 144, 146, 430, 440. And the reception is a little bit wider. But uh, in region 2 you also have the 200 MHz. The frequency set then we have basic settings. We probably can do here the buttons serial number version number here we have passwords who can do a lot of things well, I will keep it like it is I want to change as less as possible before uh, I do my tests just to make sure that I didn't mess up the settings with my tests and in the test I want to do on the two meters the different power settings in analog mode and the same here in 70 centimeters, different power meets and different bandwidth. The programming software, just to select all your channels, that works actually pretty good, no problems. Uh, on the other end, the firmware, I got my uh, ESET antivirus complaining about suspicious, so it doesn't need to be wrong, but at least it thinks that it could be wrong. So I removed my ESET, it's kind of dangerous, that's why I used my uh, laptop. I just imaged it, and when it all goes wrong, I just restore the image. Then I had only the Windows Defender on it, it runs on Windows 11. And then the Windows Defender also complained, oh, something suspicious, could be something wrong. Again, doesn't mean it's something wrong, but if both complain, so I, got, I allowed the file. And then I indeed was able to uh, update the firmware and no problems I'm doing now. I reinstalled my ESET and I do my full system scan. I don't expect any problems, but I just want to be sure. And if it finds now a virus, I will let you know. So we checked before the firmware update, after the firmware update. It was all below the minus 35 dB compared to the main carrier and sometimes was up to 80 even. So no problems there. After the firmware update, exactly the same. So as an analog radio, no problems. It's probably a bit expensive if you use it analog only. Um, but of course it is about the digital modes that it can do. One of them is the DMR. I am totally have no clue how that works. 
I know you need to request a radio ID, so I did that. I read that if you want to go with your radio on the internet to all kinds of groups, you need a Brandmaster account. I tried to uh, assign on that website. I have a little old spot, but that is where it stays. I need to go step by step, so that will be in another video. Uh, the GPS is for the digital modes. I'm not sure if it can be used as APRS. That would be great. But I think in DMR you can probably do the same with sending your location. So maybe if I put it in the window, I get some reception. I will add that in later in the video. That's it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.